Hello, welcome to Cloud Adventures. We are here today to talk about Postanel and the asset tracking solution that Postanel has realized on AWS. We are in company of Sander today, that is the platform owner of the IoT uh, platform of Postanel, IoT as uh, Internet of Things. Uh, so, Sander, uh, thank you for being here with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about Postanel? First of all, thanks for having me, Enrico. Um, a pleasure. Um, so yeah, uh, Postnow is the number one um, uh, e-commerce and uh, uh, parcel and postal provider in the Benelux. Um, we provide and deliver over 1.1 million parcels a day, uh, about 8.1 million letters a day, and we do that uh, with over 40,000 employees. Across our customer, we see that uh, many uh, of the logistic uh, customer are experiencing uh, a very high growth in terms of uh, demand and uh, in terms of let's say, the industry in general. Can you tell us a little bit how uh, you are experiencing this as Postanel and how perhaps digitalization is playing a role into this? Yeah, um, because of the constantly increasing uh, expectations of our customers, both sending and receiving, um, and the volumes that are uh, constantly increasing, uh, Postanel has decided to accelerate their digital transformation. and. One of the things that we uh, that takes part of the digital transformation is that we further want to digitalize the way we handle our operations. And that's where IoT comes in uh, for the asset tracking solution. Um, and we provide data to our business for them to make uh, better data-driven decisions um, in how they handle our operations. Okay, so you are uh, uh, accelerating in your digitalization and uh, uh, you are um, uh, tra tracking uh, assets. Um, and uh, some of these assets, as you mentioned, are the roller cages. So what is the function of a roller cage and what's yeah. the role of a roller cage inside uh, uh, Postanel? All right, so these roller cages are used to handle the parcels through our network. So all the way from where we collect the parcels from our customers that's where they've been put on these roller cages. That's how we move them into trucks, into our sorting centers and all these facilities. So it's a critical asset that we use to move the parcels all the way through our logistical operations. And by connecting those assets, we gain real-time insights on where they are. And that really helps us to further improve um, load efficiency. Um, we can make sure that we distribute uh, these assets across our network better so that we prevent congestion in the, in the operations. Um, and we can use the data in algorithms to make better predictions and executable uh, plans uh, for, for how we organize uh, the logistics. Wow, so much value in uh, this solution. So it's really about optimizing your operations and uh, bringing value to the business to make informed decision yeah, in this stage, we're really using this to further uh, digitalize the way we handle our operations. And that enables us to further um, uh, uh, make sure that the capacity of our network uh, can scale further. Um, but in the near future, I also see uh, that we can add value to our customers. So because we know where they are exactly, we can provide data to our customers or we can um, make algorithms that make sure that they'll get just-in-time deliveries of these assets for them to put into our network um, and all other kinds of uh, uh, information. Can you tell us uh, a little bit uh, perhaps about how this uh, uh, solution started off and how, how it came to be? And I, I, I understand that today you, are, you, are, uh, you started with a few roller cages and now you have more than 330,000 uh, that are connected to the IoT platform. Yeah, that's correct. So um, we started off with uh, a multi-application solution, uh, which we're running on servers and the whole infrastructure underneath, uh, which we also needed to maintain. Um, so we quickly noticed that there was a lot of time from the team, so the capacity from our team going into maintaining the infrastructure required to come up with these functionalities. I think that's a really important thing that, that we learned, and that's also why we decided to move towards the AWS services. Because using the AWS IoT uh, Internet of Things services, um, that allows us to really focus on 
developing value uh, features and value for our business so we could bring value much faster towards the business and besides that we could also leverage the constantly uh, renewing functionalities that AWS is releasing so it's about uh, a bit of two-sided uh, decision uh, to, to move towards AWS okay very good so uh, basically AWS is helping you with uh, uh, addressing the undifferentiated heavy lifting yep. taking that away from your team yep. as well as bringing the technology innovation that uh, your platform needs so you don't have to invest time in, in innovating there because you can just embrace the, the innovation that AWS is bringing yep. to you. Okay, but we this can create pipelines based on different technologies that allow our organization to put the IT technology to use to their benefits. Okay. That's really, uh, really okay. useful. Very interesting, yeah. And uh, how, how did you experience like uh, uh, growing into this platform? I think the collaboration with AWS as well uh, has had some, some uh, uh, effect on this. So um, the decision uh, which has been made to move towards uh, AWS is kind of two-sided. On one hand, AWS is a strategic cloud provider for personnel. Um, but on the other hand, we were working with a multi-application solution running on servers and the infrastructure. And I noticed that we were spending quite some time on um, maintaining that infrastructure. And I wanted to have the team more, have more focus on delivering business value. So that's really where we came in and decided to move towards the AWS services and the IT Internet of Things spectrum. And the, growing into this platform, what it is right now, is, is really interesting. Um, I think in um, about a year, we were able to come from a prototype proof of concept, which we shown that it works, uh, all the way to a fully scalable, uh, fully skilled and operational platform, uh, which has grown from a couple of dozen sensors to 330,000 sensors. And we've added it in branches. And first we did a couple hundred, a couple thousand, and all the way up to 50,000. That was really the exciting part because that's where we had the concerns whether it would run smooth or not. After that, we would just add them by the 50,000. Um, and we would see the, the sensors coming in to the network, we would detect them, and it, it ran, it ran properly really uh, to uh, to the design so yeah i'm very happy to hear that and uh, uh, how about the learning curve of your team yeah the learning curve was also very interesting because um, once we decided to move towards uh, aws it services um, at that moment the team was not that experienced um, in in this uh, uh, services in these services um, but AWS really helped us through that so uh, from starting off having conversations and a describing a, a plan and an approach with the solution architect. We also did immersion days with the developers. Um, the prototyping team was onboarded and together with the prototyping team, um, my team was able to develop a full prototype working um, in under six weeks. So I was really um, amazed by that, really pleased by that as well. And that's where we took off. And once we started off developing the actual platform, um, we got a lot of help from AWS. So we got help from IT specialists who really helped us validating the designs we were making, solution architects, product managers. They all, they all helped us validating the things that we were doing. Um, and that really made, yeah, helped us making sure that we did develop the right uh, solution. Yeah, so a, an extensive journey uh, where you experience the um, uh, customer obsession of uh, AWS and uh, so working from solution architect to uh, uh, product management for the different products. I think we are going to have a, um, a view on the different products uh, very soon together with uh, Selchuk and Amer that are going to give us a deep dive on the architecture. Um, but from a business perspective or from uh, your uh, platform owner point of view, is there any lessons learned that you would like to share with our audience? Yes, definitely. Um, I think the first um, um, experience that I'd like to share is that Really make sure that you include the cost uh, calculation of your solution in your design phase. Make sure that whatever design that you make, um, that you run the numbers and, and calculate what the cost will be and keep that against or validate it against your uh, business case. And the second uh, is that, um, like I explained earlier, my goal was to 
have the team fully focused on delivering business value. Um, and we achieved that. So we really em eliminated all the work for the maintenance of the infrastructure and we could really focus on delivering new functionality. Um, so that's definitely uh, well, a lesson learned or you could so call it a success, but I'm really pleased about that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sander. Thank you for being us, uh, with us today. So uh, next, uh, I think, uh, is going to be uh, Amer and uh, Selchuk, and they're going to drive us through the uh, technical implementation and the architecture of the solution uh, that PostNL has built. Thanks, Enrico, for having me.